If you had to pay somebody a subscription of $100 a month for them to remain your friend, would you consider that a true friend? <laughs> Obviously not. But if you're one of Jehovah's Witnesses, that's exactly what you're doing to hold on to your friends. But you're not paying over dollars, you're paying over time, energy, and effort, and you're also paying over freedom, although that often does result in financial loss as well. Let me explain what I mean by that. First of all, add up all the time that you spent out in service. When you're one of Jehovah's Witnesses, or if you're currently one, but you have doubts or even PIMO physically and mentally out, how much time do you spend in the ministry work? What could you be doing with that time? Earning a living or just enjoying the things you like to do, like a hobby or even getting some extra rest or sleep, anything else like that. What could you be doing with that time? Now, if you stopped spending any time in the ministry, would your Jehovah's Witness friends remain your friends? The answer to that is almost unanimously no. They wouldn't, which means that you are literally buying their friendship with your time. The governing body says that if you are not going out in service actively, regularly, monthly, at least checking that box, you are not one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And after six months of inactivity, you were considered not just irregular, but completely gone. They take you off the numbers. If you're not one of Jehovah's Witnesses, you're spiritually weak. If you're spiritually weak, then you're bad association and people will begin to soft shun you. They'll stop having anything to do with you. Now, of course, at first, they will try to reach out to you, try to get you to come back to Jehovah, try to get you to do these things. But if you don't, you're no longer their friends. So you have been paying for your friendship through your time. Also look at meeting attendance, including assemblies and conventions. Think of all the time you put into going to the meetings, preparing for the meetings, preparing parts, going to assemblies, preparing for that travel time, taking time off work. Think of all the resources you sacrifice to do all those things. If you stop going to the meetings, if you stop attending assemblies and conventions, would your friends that are Jehovah's Witnesses remain your friends? You know the answer. The answer is no. At first, they would try to reach out to you, try to get you to come back to Jehovah, but eventually they'll just ditch you because you're not doing what they think you should be doing. That's not real friendship. You're paying for their friendship. You're buying their friendship through the work and effort that you put into doing the things that the governing body has told all Jehovah's Witnesses they must do in order to be what they call good Christians or true Christians. That isn't friendship. Not at all. And this question is particularly important if you are a PIMO, if you're physically and mentally out, and you're trying to hang on to your friends and even your family that are Jehovah's Witnesses. Is it worth all the time, energy, and effort you're putting into the Watchtower organization in order to hang on to people that the second you stop doing what the governing body says you should do, they're no longer going to treat you like your friends? And often, they will no longer treat you like family, especially if you end up disfellowshipped. Does that sound like the kind of friends you really want to have? Do you want to pay a subscription service of your time, energy, and effort in order to have friends? That's not what true friendship is. All friendships in the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses, they're conditional. If you don't do the things you're supposed to do, they're going to stop being your friends. And that extends to a lesser degree to family, though, if, like I said, if you get disfellowship, that's going to extend to them too. They're going to cut you off. They're going to stop associating with you. Governing bodies made it very clear that families are not to associate with disfellowship family members. That just demonstrates that the love and friendship within the organization of the witnesses is 100% conditional. It's not unconditional love and it's not true friendship. So ask yourself, is that really the kind of friendship and the kind of familial love I want? Do I want my friends and my family to be beholden to the Watchtower Corporation and the ever-changing whims of the governing body? If your answer to that question is no, well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you need to find new friends and new family, people who aren't Jehovah's Witnesses. 
Now, to be fair, friendships and family associations outside does come with limitations. For instance, if you mistreat a friend or you neglect them for too long, they're likely to cool and distance themselves from you and eventually stop being your friend altogether. That's normal. But they're probably not going to do that just because you have a different theological opinion than they do. Just because you don't engage in the same weekly activities that they do. They're probably not going to dump you over something like that. At least I have never had that be my experience since exiting the religion. If you go to a different church than they do, if you go to different social networks, meetups, groups, have other friends that aren't inside that circle, they're not going to do that. That's not what friendship is. Friendship is one person valuing you for who you are and you valuing and respecting them in return for who they are. And that is not what happens in the world of Jehovah's Witnesses. In my experience outside the organization, friendship is much sturdier and much longer lasting. They're not quick to write you off or to dismiss you as bad association like in the religion. And even if they do decide that you're toxic or not a good fit for them as a friend, they're almost always making that decision on their own. There's not some corporate entity telling them they have to make that decision. The difference between friendships in the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses and those outside the organization is very stark when it comes to freedom and unconditional support. Outside the world of Watchtower, you'll find that friendships are not contingent on shared activity log or meeting attendance. Let's dive a little deeper into what makes genuine friendships outside of high control groups so different and why they're worth pursuing. First off, real friendships thrive on mutual respect and understanding not mutual activity reports and shared beliefs. In the real world, friends respect each other's choices, even when they make different decisions about religion, politics, and lifestyle. It doesn't mean you'll always agree with each other, <laughs> far from it, but disagreements are approached with curiosity and dialogue rather than judgment and shunning. Stop and think about how diverse your interests are and how much of yourself you have to suppress to fit into the world of Jehovah's Witnesses and their mold. In a genuine friendship, you're encouraged to explore your interests, question your beliefs, and grow as a person. Your friends will cheer you on as you discover new hobbies, challenges, and perspectives, and you evolve as a person. A true friend is interested in your journey as an individual, not just how well you conform to a set of expectations. And also, true friendship isn't about keeping score. You're not tallying up service hours or meeting attendance as a measure of your worthiness as a friend. Instead, friendships outside the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses are often built on shared experiences, mutual care, things that have nothing to do with any outside organization's agenda. Whether you're exploring new food, new restaurants, traveling together, or just having deep conversations, or spending time out at the bar, or doing going to a concert, or a movie, or whatever it is that you love, these experiences bond you in a way that are both profound and genuine. And that word genuine is very important, because friendships in the world of witnesses, they're not genuine at all. The support system you find in real friendships is also significantly different than that inside of the religion. Life can be tough. It throws curveballs at you, like job loss, health issues, personal crises. Stuff happens. And when it does, genuine friends are there for you. Not because the governing body told them to. Not because they're trying to win you back to Jehovah. But just because they legitimately, genuinely care about you. They don't offer support in the expectation that you'll return to Jehovah and come back to the kingdom hall or meet some other condition that they want you to meet so that they have the uh, approval of the watchtower for you to be their friend. The permission of their daddy, the governing body, to be your friend. They need their permission for you to be their friend. And the only way they get that permission is if you're doing the tally, you're you're clocking the time, you're at the meetings, you're doing all the things you're supposed to do according to the governing body. They don't do it because they value you as a person. They're trying to come to your rescue to get you back into the group, not because they genuinely care about you. At least that has been my experience. If you disagree, leave a comment. You know, I want to hear it. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Leaving Jehovah's Witnesses and finding new friends can be daunting. 
the fear of loneliness and the unknown. It, that's real and difficult to deal with. But it's also an opportunity to build authentic connections based on who you are and not what you do. The first step might be joining a club, a group. There's tons of meetup groups where people have interests that you share and you can start off with that shared interest to see if you get along with some of the people who are there in that group. They're very often just open to whoever wants to come. You can join the group. Sometimes they have to you know, give you approval to join the group, but that's always been easy. I've been to a bunch of them. And they'll meet out somewhere in public and you can get to know some people. It's a great way to get off the ground running, building some real friendships outside of the religion. It could be anything, a book club, a hiking club, a marketing meetup, art classes, tech meetups, anything like that. Just some shared interests that you have. Jehovah's Witnesses think they're special because like we can go anywhere and we can go to a kingdom hall and they are just like us. They're our family. Well, I got news for you. Everybody can do that. It's called a shared interest. So, for example, I work at a dealership where we sell Jeeps. There are dozens of Jeep meetups all over the country every year where people who love Jeeps drive their Jeeps, particularly Wranglers, but also other Jeeps. And they had these huge meetups and they had this shared love of this particular kind of car. And so people just get along naturally because they can base it off of that shared interest. Witnesses are not special in this regard. They think they are, but that's only because they've never experienced the world outside where other people do that same thing all the time. The key is to find environments where you're likely to meet people who share your passions and those people you'll tend to get along with because you have that passion for a reason and so do they. As you venture into these new social circles, remember that building friendships takes time. It's about showing up, being yourself, and taking an interest in other people and letting them do the same. Listen to their stories, share your own, and allow those connections to form naturally. You might be surprised at how many people are looking for genuine friendships, free from the conditions and expectations that you've been used to if you're still in the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses or newly out. In these new friendships, you'll find that conversation flows very different than when you're having a conversation in the religion. There's an openness. You can discuss doubts, fears, dreams, disagreements without the conversation being shut down or judged. These are the spaces where you can truly express yourself and be accepted for who you are. Now, of course, not every friendship outside the world of Jehovah's Witnesses is going to be perfect. Like any relationship, they require effort, communication, and boundaries. You do need to set limits on how you allow yourself to be treated, and that includes how you allow yourself to be treated by your friends. The difference is that these friendships allow for and encourage growth and change. They're resilient. They're capable of weathering disagreements and life changes because they're built on a foundation of mutual respect and care, not conditional loyalty to an organization. So if you find yourself questioning whether the friendships and familial relationships you have within the world of Jehovah's Witnesses are truly fulfilling, if you're still in that religion, you're having doubts, well, know that there's a whole world out there full of potential friends who won't require you to pay a monthly subscription fee of time, activities, or beliefs to keep them in your life. These are people who will stand by you, cheer for you, and support you, not because of some governing body telling them to do so, but because they genuinely care about and respect you. In the end, the decision to seek out these genuine connections is deeply personal and can be quite challenging, but it's also incredibly rewarding. You'll discover a sense of belonging that comes from being valued for who you are and not what you do or believe. This is the kind of friendship and love that everyone deserves, a kind that's free, unconditional, and profoundly human. Remember, the journey to finding true friendship and community outside the Watchtower organization is a path of self-discovery, resilience, and ultimately, freedom. And that's what it's all about, freedom. It's about finding your tribe, people who accept you and love you for the unique individual that you are. And while this journey is going to have its ups and downs, it will. The destination, a life filled with genuine connections and unconditional support, is well worth it. That's what I think anyway, but I would love to know what you think. If you're already out of the organization, how has your experience with friends been different since you've left? If you're still in and you're doubting, what concerns do you have? There are lots of people who have had the same experience you have, and I know that they'll respond to you if you leave a comment. 
Any other things you have to say, I'd love to hear it. Leave it down there. If you like this video, don't forget to click like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. And if you want to support the work that I'm doing, click the join button to become a member. If you don't see a join button, you can click the link in the video description. You can become a member. It's just a couple of bucks and it offers some benefits and helps support the work that I do. And as always, thanks for watching.